plans. So Cadbury's shareholders now will have to decide whether they will take whatever Kraft has to offer or suffer the consequences, mainly a collapse in its, a, a likely collapse in its share price, which has uh, been going up since uh, the initial offer was uh, proposed by Kraft. Jennifer, stick around. Well, uh, just uh, stay with us because uh, for more on this, Jen and I are joined by the Financial Times M&A editor, Lena Sagel. Uh, Lena, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, right, are they going to get it? Uh, we, we don't know yet. If they just formalise, choose to just formalise their bid, then it's very unlikely. And what that will do if, um, is just set the takeover clock ticking and give them time to talk to shareholders and for Cadbury to put out proper responses. Unless they really hike up the price now, it's very unlikely they're going to get it or engage Cadbury in discussions. What would happen if Cadbury did accept the deal? Wouldn't it make the world's biggest candy maker? It, well, it's already been quite vocal in rejecting, um, rejecting the initial offer and it's not going to accept at this level and shareholders are unlikely to accept at this level too. It'll have to hike up the cash component quite a lot in order to get um, Cadbury interested in talking. So what does Kraft have to pay in your opinion? Um, people are uh, saying that it has to start at 800p. A lot of investors have come out already and said that. So 800p seems to be the starting point at least. And um, going even higher than that is then going to be a worry for Kraft's shareholders and what it will do to its share price. Um, so uh, analysts and investors want at least 780 to 800 to start negotiations. Lena, just going to get your view on whether you know what the, the the strategy of this deal is and the well uh, the reasoning behind it the logic i mean isn't it the case here that Kraft needs cadbury's more than cadbury's needs Kraft, and that's uh, certainly something which is preying on the minds of cadbury shareholders yeah absolutely cadbury's in a much stronger position um it, what uh Kraft is a low growth company at the moment and buying cadbury would give it access to the uk and much more importantly to developing markets such as india right so you know your view is it's going to be a difficult one for them to get hold of here. I want to also just ask you just a general question. Does this presage a new, well, round of M&A activity looking ahead? I know that's a different one, a difficult one to call, but you are, after all, the M&A editor at the FT. Well, no, I mean, um, the market went into a sort of hyper overdrive uh, a couple of months ago when this bid was announced and Deutsche Telekom um, did a deal with France Telecom with its O2 business. And, uh, you know, notes circulated all around the city that the bid was back, but it's certainly not back to any levels um, such as 2007. And while confidence is growing, it's still getting deals done is taking much, much longer. So dialogue has picked up, but. We're definitely not in an explosive M&A situation. Lena, thanks a lot for that. Lena Sagel, joining you. us there from Financial Times. She is their mergers and acquisitions editor.